here with you this morning. I am going to talk to you about a few things that I, I want to make sure we're all uh, keeping abreast of. And in particular, I think we've got a pretty strong message we need to send to the U.S. Congress and to the guys that occupy this building behind me. It was Ben Franklin in 1775 that said, I recollected that her eye excelled in brightness that of any other animal and that she has no eyelids. Those of you with that don't tread on me flag out there, hold it up. Wave it proud. Do not tread on Texas. She may be therefore esteemed an emblem of vigilance. Vigilance, eternal vigilance, the price of freedom. Texas is watching. We are watching you, Washington, and we are watching you, Austin. She never begins an attack, but when once engaged, never surrenders. Yeah. She is therefore an emblem of magnanimity and true courage. As if anxious to prevent all pretensions of quarreling with her, the weapons with which nature has furnished her, she conceals in the roof of her mouth so that to those who are unacquainted with her, she appears to be a most defenseless animal. And even when those weapons are shown and extended for her defense, and we are showing those weapons today, we are extending for our defense today. They appear weak and contemptible, but our wounds, however small, are decisive and fatal. Hear us, Washington. Here as Austin, Texas, we will not stand for tyranny in our state, and we will not stand for tyranny in our country. <laughs> Conscious of this, we never wound till we have generously given notice. We are giving notice today. We are giving notice today. even to her enemy, and cautioning him against the danger of treading on her. We will not stand for the nationalization of our business. We will not stand for fascism in our country. Yeah. We are here today to talk about sovereignty or secession. I am here today to encourage the Texas legislature and the governor of the state of Texas to defend the sovereignty of this great state. <laughs> to defend in a fierce and vigilant way in which they have never defended before. And I'm here to remind them that our founders gave us ability to do that. We are aware that stepping off into secession may in fact be a bloody war. We are aware. We understand that the tree of freedom is occasionally watered with the blood of tyrants and patriots. These are serious days. I want to remind us though Jefferson made an eloquent argument for the use of nullification and interposition. We've not even tried those weapons in our arsenal. We've not even begun to use them. Jefferson said that if those who administer the general government be permitted to transgress the limits fixed by our compact as a union, by a total disregard, could we have any more total disregard for this compact than we have today? The power therein contained that the states who formed that instrument, being sovereign and independent states, have the unquestionable right. It's our right to judge when you're transgressing on us. It's our right. And we have the right to nullify by those sovereignties all unauthorized acts done under the color of the Constitution. That is our rightful remedy. We will nullify cap and trade. We will, we will nullify national health care. We will
will nullify real ID and we will damn sure nullify you trying to take our guns. Yeah! Not Texas, not Austin, Texas, nor Washington, D.C. will transgress on our property. We will not we will no longer stand in Texas for leasing that which we have worked hard to possess from our government. We will eliminate property tax in Texas. We will own our property and we will own our guns and Texans will be free. And when Texas stands, when Texas waves that don't tread on me and Texas says you come and take it, when we stand for freedom in Texas, the United States of America will begin again to look like a republic, the great republic that we are. It is up to us. It is up to you. Power corrupts and money corrupts and there is corruption in Washington, D.C., and there is corruption in Austin, Texas, and we will stand for it no more. It is up to us. People say, can we win elections? Can the grassroots win elections? We can win if we work hard. We have an election coming in March of 2010, and in November of 2010, and Texans need to be working hard. You're here today doing the first, taking the first step that I'm proud to work with you in that. I'm proud to work with you all across this great state. We will restore Texas sovereignty. We will restore Texas sovereignty, or Texas will do as Texas decides. I appreciate you being here today. Thank you very much. Latino!